All right, our next conversation is about universal health coverage. So on the 20th of, uh, what month was that? October. October. Yeah. <laughs> Just, the, Just other day, the other day. There was a national launch of the universal health coverage in the country by the president. And this, is, you know, after this long journey of we're going to have UHC launch countrywide, UHC launch countrywide. And we know several laws were uh, brought in, um, several things happened. And the whole conversation about UHC has been taking place for a while. Now, of course, UHC is facilities, UHC is getting access, UHC is getting affordability, UHC is, you know, being able to get health care at your nearest level, okay? Who is giving you that health care? Health care workers. Uh, do we have proper, well-trained health care workers countrywide? That's a conversation we want to see. Okay. Um, we think about doctors. We think about nurses. We think about lab technicians. We think about uh, all the other cadres of health care workers. The Kenya Medical Training Colleges countrywide are big. And that's why we are joined now by the CEO of KMTC, Dr. Kelly Olwoch. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. How Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mambo namdagani? Mambo salama. Very good. Yes. Karibu sana. Okay. Uh -huh. The proverb? Our problems for the whole of this week come from the country, the Republic of Congo, otherwise known as the, the Congo, mm. otherwise known as Congo Brazzaville. Great events may stem from words of no importance. Great events may stem from words of no importance. Mm. Dr. Luch, uh -huh. what's your interpretation of this proverb? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I know that uh, words have power. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that uh, mm, every word has a meaning. And uh, as it is, uh, we become what we think about and uh, what we say that's what we are and that's what we become and uh, so uh, to me I don't think that uh, whatever we say should be taken casually whatever we say whichever context has uh, a way of uh, coming into its uh, physical form mm. and therefore that's why it's important to use words carefully because then it means that uh, words then becomes uh, translate into their physical form yeah mm. yeah mm. Mm. <laughs> it's a very very good interpretation mm -hmm. it's a it's actually a very insightful interpretation it's deep yes it is it's deep mm. the Terry when city was growing up he saw KMTCs. When I was growing up, I saw KMTCs. <laughs> now, recently, we have seen KMTCs. You know, the, those days used to be few. You know, one maybe in a district, in a larger district. There now, are some provinces that, that some had provinces, them. provinces actually yeah, that had them. Yes. That, that had KMTCs. Eh? Now, now mm -hmm. there are very many KMTCs. Give us a history of KMTC. Okay, thank you, uh, Eric. KMTC was started in 1927. Uh, 27. 1927. We are having 96 uh, years of experience of training human resources for health. Uh, it was started at uh, Gene School, the then Kenya Institute of Administration. Mm -hmm. uh, it later came uh, to King George IV Hospital. Which is Kenyatta. Yes, that time <laughs> it was along Kingsway, the current university way. Mm. And then it moved to the current Kenyatta, that is King John IV Hospital. Mm. And uh, there has been a lot of evolution of the institution. At one point in time, uh, it was called College for Health Professionals, that is around 1987. Mm. Um, it has grown from four students in 1927 to the current <laughs> 62,807 students. Um, the college has also had uh, a tremendous uh, expansion in terms of the number of campuses. Mm. Uh, currently, we have uh, 74 campuses in 44 counties mm. across the country. Uh, Eric, I think it's also important to note that mm. uh, this year the college is going to graduate the highest number of human resources for health, that is close to 23,000 health workers. 
So as an institution, we want to look at how then do we become relevant mm. to the healthcare needs of the country? Mm. How do we support UHC? How do we ensure that quality is inculcated in all our processes mm. and thorough put? And then how do we ensure that uh, the graduates eventually get meaningful involvement in terms of economic empowerment, in terms of uh, employment, in terms of contributing to the communities they come from. And that is basically why uh, the institution has uh, developed a strategy that will be a five-year strategy to look into the quality of training, mm. to look into research consultancy and innovation, mm. to look into digital transformation, and to look into sustainability of the institution. And here in sustainability, we want to not only look at uh, financial sustainability of the institution, but uh, the institution being a viable institution, being able to satisfy the needs of its stakeholders mm. and staying relevant to the call of duty of UHC and primary health care and providing solutions that are real time. Like right now, City, I've seen that in your paper, there's a lot of discussion uh, about um, emergency medical technician. There's mm. a, um, a, a page that is talking about it. So the institution uh, has looked at such uh, cases where the first point of contact means life or death to the person who becomes uh, an, a victim of accident. Mm. And so we have uh, looked at how then do we make sure we have relevant trained personnel? How do we empower other state actors, the police, um, uh, the, the border border riders. And so we, we, we just don't want to be in classroom settings. We want to be relevant mm. to the public where that knowledge is needed most and where it means life or death of a, a victim. Mm. Yeah. Who is trained at KMTCs? When we talk about medical professionals, who are the individuals who walk through the doors of these colleges and then come who graduate? Mm -hmm. uh, what do we have then in terms of professionals after graduation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, majorly people who train in KMTC, we have seven faculties. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, 18 departments, and currently we have uh, 95 courses. Mm. And the faculties start from clinical uh, focusing faculties, that is curative services, in which we have uh, clinical medicine, mm. that is faculty of clinical medicine. We have nursing. Then we have pharmaceutical sciences as another faculty. Mm. Then we have uh, those rehabilitative uh, sciences and in re rehabilitative sciences we are looking at courses like physiotherapy, mm -hmm. occupational therapy, optometry. We are also looking at public health and here we have community health assistance, public health uh, course, we have community health promoters, we also have short courses for community health extension workers. Mm -hmm. And um, we have also what is called uh, the health information systems and medical education. Here we produce uh, graduates who are able to keep uh, records, be able to use them real time to enable uh, other healthcare professionals make decisions concerning people's health, uh, de demographic data, and also be able to produce those who can teach in our faculties because we derive majorly our faculties from professionals. Mm. So you have to turn them into lecturers. Mm. So we have a faculty for medical education that uh, enables um, those who we have recruited to teach for us to be able to, be to, uh, to uh, understand pedagogy and be able to then translate into from professionals into real classroom setup and also be able to instruct learners in clinical areas and uh, our skills laboratories. What do they graduate with? Certificates, <coughs> diplomas, higher national mm -hmm. diplomas? They graduate with certificates. Uh, majority graduate with diplomas. We have higher national diplomas. And then we also have short courses that uh, uh, we offer 
to enable strengthen those who are already working to provide uh, services that are relevant and uh, which are up to date mm -hmm. yes so upon graduation then from mm -hmm. a KMTC around the country mm -hmm. you will then be able to enter into a work uh, a workspace whereby uh, these uh, resources then are being delivered by nature of the person who has graduated mm -hmm. so you do not need additional education for very basic level of service delivery is that what we're saying or must you then go to yet another um, um, institution and then get additional education or can you leave a KMTC today and practice and deliver health services as they are needed mm -hmm. uh, moving forward yes uh, Ndu, uh, KMTC offers what is called competency based curricula and uh, our mode of uh, learning is 30 percent theory that is being in class learning about the uh, meaning behind the practice mm. and then we have um, 70 percent of the time that students either practice in our skills laboratories uh, or go to clinical area mm. where they then learn on real patients about um, procedures interventions and uh, then that means that uh, by the time our students graduate they have the capacity to practice in the clinical setup mm -hmm. so they do not need any other training after that to be able to have to interface with the patient because they will have done sufficiently what mm -hmm. is required what then that means also is uh, there is also KMTC is highly uh, regulated mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. We have almost 10 regulatory bodies that monitor training at Kenya Medical Training College. Mm -hmm. And so when students graduate, then there's also the other phase of it of being able to practice as a certified practitioner in that area. Mm -hmm. Like once you graduate with nursing, then you have to sit nursing council exam and then you get enrolled as a nurse in Kenya to practice. Mm. And so what then is needed immediately after you graduate from KMTC mm. is to make sure that uh, regulatory bodies uh, give you um, authority to practice mm -hmm. through sitting relevant regulatory exams okay. and then you translate them into a professional working and uh, being regulated by relevant regulatory body. Okay. So if we look at uh, obviously what uh, individuals because we've talked about now 62,807 that's the number you gave from the time mm -hmm. we started as four students to now mm -hmm. this big number mm -hmm. being delivering health services uh, at a personal capacity or at a greater capacity into the future mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. so now we are saying that there is a huge chunk that has been delivered through those who've gone through a KMTC mm -hmm. they have Mm -hmm. Now, a month ago, okay, less than a month ago, mm -hmm. we finally delivered or at least launched this universal health coverage, mm -hmm. which looks at giving health services at the very basic level without you having to pay more mm -hmm. than you would normally contribute. Mm -hmm. And so now here we are saying mm -hmm. that if anybody has been primed mm -hmm. to deliver UHC, it's the folks who've come through KMTC. Mm -hmm. So now, with what is being offered on a national level in terms of health and its services, mm -hmm. would KMTC, would you say that KMTC today, mm -hmm. as it is currently constituted then, mm -hmm. is able to meet the needs that UHC is offering to, mm -hmm. to meet? Yes. Uh, I, I want to confidently say that KMTC has the capacity mm -hmm. to meet human resource needs of the country. Uh, we have uh, tailored our programs to address primary health care needs. And in primary health care needs, what we are looking at is the first point of contact mm. for any individual with a health care system. Mm. And uh, it means that it happens at the household level, yeah. at the community level. And then you want to ask yourself, what is it that uh, a Kenyan who has not thought about going to the hospital need in terms of health care? First, they need information. So you have uh, in KMTC a course on health promotion. Mm -hmm. They need information. They need to 
have certain things in place like sanitation, mm -hmm. having a defecation free environment. Mm -hmm. And so KMTC produce, uh, has a course on public health. And then you need proper nutrition mm -hmm. at community level. We do not have to have malnourished children, children who are stunted in growth, mm -hmm. or adults who have no proper nutrition. So we have in KMTC a course on nutrition. Then, in order to galvanize um, the primary health care, mm. you need people who can walk from house to house, monitoring uh, cases, being able to do follow-ups. For example, pregnant mothers who are supposed to be delivering in hospital, having what we would call ANC visits, antenatal mm. care visits, mm. uh, that should be at least four. So you have these people with gadgets that they are able to remind a household mother mm. that you need to be in the hospital on this date. That is where we have community health prof uh, uh, promoters. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, to galvanize all this, at least uh, 100 households has to have someone who really makes sure that information flows correctly, that uh, Re, re, cause, cases that are supposed to be reported are reported in a timely way and that in KMTC now we have what is called community health assistance mm. so these people are able to interact with data be able to uh, process information that uh, enables a household to make decisions about their health care needs uh, they also promote things like enabling households to um, access um, Insurance, health insurance, that then is important for making sure that they do not have suffer what is called catastrophic or financial challenges. Yeah. And that is the whole meaning of UHC, that all people are able to access quality health care wherever they are, whenever they are, without suffering catastrophic financial costs mm. and KMTC is geared in terms of human resources to provide solutions at that level. We also have uh, what is called health information systems. Mm. Being able to galvanize this information, collect it, organize it, making sure that each household, when you go to a health facility, you do not need papers anymore. Mm -hmm. So KMTC produces um, professionals who, who are called health records and information system uh, professionals who are able then to make sure that the system is flawless. You do not need paper, you do not need a card, you only need a system that is efficient. Mm. And KMTC produces professionals in this area. So we have uh, tailored our courses in such a way that they are able to provide uh, the primary health care needs of the country. And then as you move up the ladder, of um, healthcare, mm. then we have now specialized uh, professionals in this area. And that's why we have uh, curative and then we have specialized uh, courses at KMTC at higher diploma level mm. to address uh, what is called resource constrained environment situations where you do not have an anesthesiologist trained at the university. Yeah. We have an anesthetist. Okay. produced at KMTC, mm -hmm. who is able to work at that level four and provide care. What's the difference between the two? The level of practice. That's it? Yeah, the level of practice, yes. Explain. Mm -hmm. The level of practice, we have a highly specialized anesthesia, mm -hmm. which can only be done in a very high level of hospitals, like mm -hmm. uh, level six hospitals, like Kenyatta, Moi mm -hmm. Teaching and Referral Hospital, which require something like epidural anesthesia, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, when you want to go through processes, procedures like um, kidney uh, uh, surgeries, mm -hmm. Those levels of uh, skilled uh, anesthesia have to be provided by a more specialized, higher level individual. Okay. However, you have certain uh, lower level of anesthesia that can be done at lower levels, like when you need to do diagnosis, mm. uh, like laparoscopy. Mm. Those scans can be done by specialists trained at Kenya Medical Training College. 
but at, at the university level then you're trained essentially mm-hmm. to be an as- anesthesiologist mm-hmm. but you're trained at the college to be mm-hmm. an anesthetist yes. that's what we're saying yes so then it's the level of practice. education and training mm-hmm and not the level of practice because are we saying that if an individual goes to the training college Mm -hmm. and trains for this very same thing Mm -hmm. and somebody goes to university level by the time they come out the person who is at the university level then Mm -hmm. is ready to go in and as as is allowed is allowed a certain degree of practice practice, that the other one is not not yes right Uh, Uh, that's what you mean by the level of practice that's what you mean not that the years in which you've actually been in theater Mm -hmm. working it out Mm -hmm. or the level of practice because In medical field, there's a, a level of responsibility. Okay. Yeah. That if uh, there's a, a suit, then uh, it means that uh, a person who is supposed to take responsibility should have the skills that match that level of practice. Okay. So as uh, you go up the levels of practice, then uh, higher responsibility is taken okay. by the practitioner. You know, I've often wondered, Dr. Yes. What is the difference between a higher diploma and a degree? Uh, okay. Okay, let me uh-huh. ask it from the base, first base. What is the difference between a diploma and a degree? Okay. Um, a diploma and a degree um, looks at uh, various uh, levels of competency. At a diploma level, um, basically, you are training someone for skills majorly and that degree you put more emphasis on um, the theory that then enables practice so diploma uh, takes a shorter period of time that is uh, in our case three years uh, in kenya degrees take uh, up to four years mm. and so uh, diploma level uh, practitioners majorly uh, we concentrate on the skills of uh, uh, learners. So we have, in our case, 70% of our graduates taking most of the, uh, 70% of the time in the laboratories, skills labs, and uh, hospital setup to be on the job uh, in terms of uh, their level of practice. Uh, when you look at higher diploma and uh, degree, uh, we have what is called KNQA. Kenya National Qualifications Authority. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do equation of degrees they, and uh, diplomas. Now, there are certain levels of practice of diplomas, higher diplomas, that have been equated to degree that is level seven of practice of certain levels of uh, diplomas, higher diplomas, to degrees mm. through K and QA so that they are able to then be able to practice at almost same level because of the equation that has been done by K and QA. We worked with them to look at uh, then what's the number of hours that these people spend in class. Then what's the number of hours that they spend in clinical practice mm. before they come back to do higher diploma. And then when they're doing higher diploma, what's the level of competency and the man hours? So then this then formed the basis of standardization in terms of level of practice and the skill and knowledge that the higher diploma has and degree has. Mm. However, there are certain uh, degrees that still cannot be equated with uh, higher diplomas, like pharmacy, like uh, medicine and like dentistry Mm. because of the number of hours that uh, the degree holder spends Mm -hmm. in uh, class and they spend in uh, clinical practice and the depth that they go to uh, before they graduate. So there are exceptions in uh, classification and grading Mm -hmm. of diplomas, higher diplomas and degrees. You see, as a layperson, one of the, the things that I took and to the misnomer on my part, really, that um, when you talk to a clinical officer, you talk of uh, uh, a farm tech, you are you, you, you're talking of more of an adjunct of someone who has perhaps a higher qualification. And yet, in later years, I came to understand these are actually different profession, professions. Mm. A, a lab tech is a lab tech. That's what they do. They're trained to be lab techs. Now, somebody who studied something like, say, microbiology or has a degree 
in the same yes they'll be in the lab but what they do is similar in some ways but again as you say competence is different and the roles even that they play is different and even the decisions that they'll make yes uh, on behalf of uh, uh, to the patient are different because mm. uh, it's it, it uh, in medical field it is very clear it should be very clear that um, the level of training should determine the level of practice and the level of responsibility that the professional takes for the decisions they make and so that's why uh, uh, you do not take medical training for granted mm-hmm. and therefore when we pra- when we we design courses at Kenya Medical Training College the first thing you really have to take care of is patient safety and that the decisions that this professional is going to make at their level is going to assure the patient that they are safe in the hands of that professional at that level mm. yes where it is beyond their scope then the health system has a way of a referral system that there are certain levels of practice that certain levels of equipment and uh, facilities that are at arranged in levels mm-hmm. so that uh, a referral takes place from a lower level to a higher to level, higher level. Mm-hmm. but when people start to recuperate then referrals can actually take place from higher levels mm. to lower levels because now the patient is uh, recovering and all that is needed is care for that patient to recuperate mm. and so um, levels of practice levels of education uh, determine the decisions that are made about a patient at various levels sure yeah. so since our <coughs> topic of discussion is UHC, yeah. then does it not stand to reason that perhaps the focus on our training ought to be people who have these technical capabilities and who perhaps will, are able to work at the lower levels of healthcare facilities? Because that is where the majority of the people actually ought to be, and that's probably where their healthcare needs ought to be taken care of. City, you are very correct very 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 correct that uh, you, if you focus at lower levels that is primary healthcare level you are able to save so much in terms of healthcare costs as you go higher mm. that means that if you mo- put one shilling at primary care level you are saving nine shillings when you are looking at higher levels of practice when now you are seeking treatment and in KMTC we actually focus so much on skill eh? that uh, the people we produce are hands-on mm. individuals. Mm. They are not people who sit in office and give instructions. They are people who go to the ground. They are like the army. They are, they are like the infantry in the army, the ones who are the ground soldiers to make sure that the health system works. And uh, in KMTC City, we focus on the skills that these people need to ensure that households live healthy lives. And so if you look at the portfolio of KMTC, the portfolio is designed in such a way that if investments are done by counties at lower level, by ensuring that human resources for health are adequate at lower level, then we will have lesser incidences, lesser cases at higher level. And we actually focus on ensuring that uh, lower levels of healthcare work mm. before we now start referrals t- talking about uh, cases of surgeries then pra- uh, information should have uh, been given at lower levels about healthy living mm-hmm. yes so then obviously the delivery of health mm-hmm. is also leveled yes yeah? yes it is mm-hmm. from level 1 to 6 then mm-hmm. in terms of facilities mm-hmm. and um so are we saying now that there would be greater emphasis on those who are coming out of KMTCs to deliver health at that level? Because we are saying mm-hmm. that truly if you are taken care of with these issues that lower levels then can uh, mm-hmm. provide for, mm-hmm. then you reduce the burden mm-hmm. on the higher levels. Mm-hmm. So should that be where a lot of the emphasis for training then is? Yes, yes. And uh, uh, I want to say and do that... Mm-hmm. Uh, KMTC does not work in isolation. Mm -hmm. It really works with the counties. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the counties, we want to ask them, which which cadre do you need most to take care of your primary level of healthcare? Mm -hmm. Uh, Right now, to start with, we have uh, CHPs who have been uh, uh, given basic uh, uh, knowledge, Mm -hmm. tooled, 
and empowered to provide care. Uh, we also have, as I have mentioned before, mm. certain cadres at KMTC who have, gi have been uh, trained specifically to make sure that people live healthy lives in the community. And I have mentioned uh, nutritionists, public health, we've mentioned community health assistance. Mm. And so now what we are looking at is calibrating need per county and making sure that uh, the KMTC trains as per the needs of these counties. Mm. Counties mm. have different types of needs. You mm. see, in Kenya, we have those rural counties. Yeah. We have counties that uh, border the highways. Yeah. We have counties that have uh, historically had uh, certain kind of uh, disease patterns. Yeah. So when you have a county that is along the highway, they are likely to be prone to cases of accidents. Mm. So they will need certain cadres more than those counties that are rural, that do not have highways and do not encounter uh, road traffic accidents. Mm. And so for such counties, you we will have to, uh, if you look at the pattern of KMTC in terms of the courses, uh, campuses, you realize that let's say a, a county like Makweni mm. has a campus like Makindu. Mm. That campus will probably, most probably, offer courses that are geared towards facing challenges that the highway is likely right. to have mm. for the citizens that are living in that area, like emergency medical technicians course mm. for emergency response just in case of emergency. So the Makindu campus yeah. will have more students who are geared towards this, yeah. more than even the water campus, which is in the same county. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will have, for example, orthopedic trauma medicine mm. at Makindu. So that, uh, because those hospitals in those regions will register higher levels of accidents compared to uh, counties where we do not have so much traffic, we do not have so much. Mm. So we will have that kind of pattern in terms of uh, county needs and the training that we offer at KMTC. And we will also make sure that there are certain courses that are uh, cutting across, like nursing, clinical medicine, mm. those ones will be like common denominators for most com uh, campuses. Uh, then there are those courses that are geared towards primary health care that are really, really needed. We will try to make sure that they are at, at least in each county, like community health assistants, mm. the ones that then coordinate uh, primary health care to link to higher levels of health care. So uh, our our pattern of courses in campuses is geared towards addressing local needs of counties okay. at that point in time. Okay. Yes. You've talked about a five-year strategic plan. Yes. That's, um, w when does it begin? When does it end? It begins this year, ends in 2028. 20, okay. Yes. So this strategic plan, um, by the time you're finalizing it, mm -hmm. the implementation of it, mm -hmm. Are we going to have like you know a different outlook of KMTC? Uh, should we expect something that's different from the previous five years? What what are we going to see in the next five years? It's going to be highly transformative. Mm. It's going to be um, define the competition in uh, healthcare training in the next five years. Uh, first we are looking at the quality of training. We want to ensure that in this key result area, we address the emerging issues. The current emerging issue is that um, after COVID-19, lessons were learned that uh, the world is not sitting pretty in terms of the amount of health workers at every facility when you need them. For example, you had developed countries struggling to keep up with uh, the pandemic. Yeah. And it uh, exposed the underbelly of the healthcare system, the soft underbelly of the healthcare system mm. when it comes to the most uh, important pillar that is human resources for health. So we then thought that in this new strategy, we should focus on not only ensuring that the country has sufficient numbers in terms of human resources for health that are relevant to the healthcare needs of the country, mm. but we are able to produce graduates who are able to work in other parts of the, uh, of the world. Mm -hmm. So in the vision for this strategic plan, we are looking at a globally competitive institution for training human resources for health. And 
in the quality of training to make sure that this is achieved then we have to redefine what is called fit for purpose yeah. health workers a fit for purpose health worker should be able to communicate should be able to have uh, requisite skills mm. and should be able to give quality healthcare so in terms of communication we realize that if we are going to produce human resources for health that are not going only going to be relevant to this country but throughout the world then we must make sure that they have certain skills of communication they able to speak various languages so kmtc in this strategic plan in the, the quality of training is offering beyond what a medical professional should know that is tailoring courses that at their own uh, time mm. the it is like an in, an elective to make sure that they learn french they learn german learn arabic mm. and uh, be able to sit for those be prepared to sit for exams like english uh, uh, language tests mm. and we offer a, we have a test center we have a language center so these are the new features of the new strategy mm. that is a uh, outward looking mm -hmm. that is not only trying to address the healthcare needs of the country but be able to have healthcare workers that can work in other parts of the country and that that healthcare worker will not be disillusioned when they graduate because the economy cannot absorb all of them at the same time mm -hmm. they have the choice of working in other parts of the world where a vacancy exists and they can have gainful living we have another Excuse situation me. yes that means that you need to standardize the courses that you're offering at KMTC to make sure that they're globally competitive yes that a diploma from KMTC mm -hmm. can be recognized elsewhere yes so what have you done about that um first we have what is called ISO certification mm -hmm. uh, the institution is ISO certified secondly we have uh, collaborated with embassies like we now have a tripartite agreement between the country that is Kenya and UK mm -hmm. and uh, we collaborate with British Council to provide the additional preparation that is needed for a nurse to work in UK mm -hmm. so they are prepared they sit for an exam in an examination center that we also have and when they leave the country to UK they are ready to work so all they go to do there is get a space to live adjust to the environment mm -hmm. and immediately go into the work space mm -hmm. the work environment so we are also trying to ensure that we have the exam that is being offered for entry for US Canada being done here in Kenya mm -hmm. to ensure that our graduates do not have to go to South Africa or India because not every gra graduate will have those resources yeah so we have uh, worked with the examining body to ensure that we have uh, the process taking place here in Kenya so we will now have to look at before they sit for that exam what else is needed mm. and then we offer it prepare the students they sit for that exam and then link with the uh, other players to make sure that this uh, graduates enter the marketplace there mm. so we are going an extra mile we will not be satisfied to say we have graduated this number but we will want to say we have graduated this number and this number and they are working have gotten placement in terms of employment in this country in this country in this country and the rest the country is able to employ locally so that is the kind of a uh, key result area number one mm we also looking at uh, the issue of in terms of quality of training mm. we have those cadres like uh, what city was asking about uh, you have higher diploma you want somebody you have somebody who has practiced uh, as a diploma graduate for two years mm. and they are not able to leave the workspace because the employer maybe the county does not have the numbers to replace them yes when they leave to come to come to see for another 18 months to qualify with a higher diploma mm. yet the facilities they have at the county mm. because what is most important in diploma programs is the competency so 70% the capacity mm. to do what they are supposed to do so this person should be able to be trained 
at the local level. It's called collegiate training. Mm -hmm. So the higher diploma, if you want to have a higher diploma, you do not have to seek permission to come to Nairobi, to come to a campus, to do it full time and uh, leave your workspace uh, and the employer does not have somebody to replace you. Mm -hmm. We must be able to offer solutions that are flexible for learners who are also employer, employed so that we do not have people stagnating in one job group forever because they have not been given leave to come and train. We do not have counties suffering from um, lack of skills because the people they can send to, to, to be trained if they do so, then they suffer okay. certain financial challenges. So we want to offer a solution that is a bit different from what we've been offering up to now. We want to be relevant to the situations that our learners will want to uh, will find themselves in. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at the issue of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, the world is uh, quickly moving towards um, the digital space, and uh, as KMTC, we no longer want to think that we are safe mm. in terms of uh, being able to say that uh, we are competing at local level. Mm. Mm. There is the issue of telemedicine. The, the, health, the technologies that are fastest in terms of uh, change are in the medical field. Mm. So we want to make sure we have that level of industry, academia, collaboration with industry players especially in technology uh, heavy courses mm. and so we will not just be able to say that uh, once you learn your 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 content in class then you are able to practice we want to go to let's say GE and make sure that the new technology for diagnosis mm. is being transfused into the minds of the learners when they are in class. So we would want to make sure that that level of uh, relevance is uh, inculcated in our, uh, in our um, graduates. Mm. By the time they graduate, they should not be strangers they should not be going to start learning that yes. technology yes. in, in uh, the facility. On yes, the job. yes. Right. So we would want to make them very familiar with telemedicine, be able to know how to use information mm. and be able to use it relevantly and uh, competently and also with a lot of um, responsibility mm. because data protection for patients now is very key in uh, an, an era where technology is taking uh, you know uh, now is a short time we are, we are just about 30 seconds out of the show <laughs> I just want to ask the final question to roll out this strategic plan 2023-2028 mm -hmm. is there any capital outlay do yes. you need more money mm, yes uh, the strategic plan for the five years will cost 86 uh, billion Kenya over the five years yes mm. over the five years uh, what we can realize through our normal revenue streams mm. is 53.6 billion giving us almost 26 uh, billion in terms of revenue deficit mm. that can actually uh, make sure the strategic plan works. So then we have uh, a component in the strategic plan mm. for purposes of ensuring that we raise that extra revenue outside the traditional revenue stream through sustainability. Uh -huh. Making sure we work with partners, we collaborate, we look into um, other sources of revenue generation like internally generated. Sounds like you're confident areas. you can raise the money. We will. That you need. We will because we work with partners. We don't work alone. Okay. And we will be able to make sure that uh, we interest partners to work with us. Dr. Tari, thank yes. you very much for joining us. Come again so we talk about this in greater detail. Dr. Thank Kelly Oluoch is the CEO of the Kenya Medical Training Colleges. He's been our guest. KMTC is gearing to be the one solution for UHC, not just in the country, but also for training our healthcare workers who can be globally competitive. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.